Kia ora team, welcome back to the 2.6 series. This video will be about collecting and processing data. In this lesson, you'll be learning about how to collect transect data, how to draw a profile diagram, and how to collect abiotic data. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to collect transect data and record it on a table, accurately draw a profile diagram, and describe how to collect abiotic data and interpret it. So it's important to collect data on our stratified forest so we can get an idea of how forest communities change over time. We do this through plotting a profile diagram. A profile diagram is a visual representation of forest structure along a transect. They're able to show structural changes in the forest over time. So what's a transect you may ask? A transect is just a line across a habitat. To create a profile diagram you'll need to collect the following data. Number one distance along transect in meters and you'll collect this using a piece of string marked at one meter intervals. The next thing is the estimated height of a plant in meters and you'll just take this um, data using a meter ruler. After you collect your data you're going to need to record it onto a table. So here's the table you'll be recording it on. On one side you've got the common name followed by the species name and then on this side you've got the distance along transect, so how far it is, it is along the transect line, and then the height of the plant in meters. Here's a video of Mr. Preslin and I working together to collect this biotic data. Can you see this line down here, this orange line? That's our transect. So we're measuring this plant here. And it's about one meter along the transect, and Mr. President said it's about 1.2 meters. What do you reckon? One meter or something like that. Three meters? 2.5, three. three. Yeah. So distance along transect? Would be one, two meters? Distance along transect is two, two meters. And three. And the height of the plant is three meters. Distance along transect is 3 meters and the height is 1.2 meters. Okay. Alright, next species is this guy. One, two, three, four, four and a half meters long transect. Height is or 1.2. It's the same one as before, so it's the fish. One, two, three, four, four and a half meters long transect. Species, same as the last one. Height, 1.2 meters. All right, next one. I'm going to say it's about two and a half times three, so five meters. So five meters tall. Distance long transect, one, two, three, four, five meters. And this is tree. centimeters tall and we'll call it, I don't know, just one little shot. Cool. All right, so now that we've collected the data on a table, we have to plot this data on a profile diagram. Now there are four steps in plotting a profile diagram. The first is allocate a symbol for each species. You can use a triangle, a circle, whatever shape. Draw a key that matches the common name to the symbol. Step 2. Draw and label the axes. On the x-axis, you've got the distance along transect in meters. On the y-axis, you've got the height of the plant in meters. Step number 3. 
Plot the data points in order of distance along transect. Because if you don't plot them in any order, you're likely to miss out some data points. And the last step, step number four, is you have to indicate the five different strata layers. You have to indicate the strata layers because this is what it's all about, a profile diagram, is to identify the different strata. All right, so here is a video of me showing you guys how to draw this profile diagram. So here's the graph paper I'll draw my profile diagram on. And this was the table that Mr. Presley and I collected data on. The first thing I'm gonna do is to allocate a symbol for each plant species. I'm gonna draw a key that matches the plant to this symbol. So for the fern, I've decided to use a triangle. For the palm, I've decided to use a circle. For the bush, I've decided to use a star. For the tree, I've decided to use a crescent. And for the shrub, I decided to use a square. The second thing I'm gonna do is draw and label my axes. So let's start with the x-axis, the horizontal axis. Along the x-axis, we plot the distance along the transect. And this is in meters. I need to look at my data to find the biggest number, the biggest distance along transect. And it's six meters. Now I'm going to count how many squares I've got along this horizontal axis. I've got 29 squares. You don't have to write this down, but I'm writing it down to show you guys how to work it out. So I've got 29 squares divided by 6 meters, which is my biggest number, which equals 4.8. So, I'm going to use 4 squares per meter for my x-axis. I'm going to draw this now. I'm going to use 4 squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, per meter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, Now you can get not achieved if this scale is not correct. You'll have to do a resub. Now the y axis, the vertical axis. I need to look at my data to find the biggest number and it's five meters in this case. And I'm going to write this down, but you don't have to. It's just for me to show you. I'm going to count how many squares I've got on this vertical axis. And I've got 19 squares. So 19 squares on my vertical axis divided by the 5 meters up there equals 3.8. Therefore, I'm going to use three squares per meter for my y-axis. And on this y-axis, we plot the height of the plant. Cool, so I'm just going up three squares per meter. And I'm writing the label for the axis, which is the height of the plant. In meters. Cool, so the third thing I'm gonna do is plot the data points in order of distance along transect. Cool, so the fern is one meters along the distance of the transect, and it's one meter high. One meter on the x-axis, and one meter on the y-axis, 
and I'm using a triangle because that's the symbol I've given the fern. Cool, next one, palm. It's two meters across and three meters high. Two meters across and three meters high and I'm going to use a symbol circle for the palm. Next one, the bush. It's three meters across and 1.2 meters high. Three meters across and 1.2 meters high. And I'm going to use a star for the bush. Next one, another bush, 4.5 meters across and 1.2 meters high. So 4.5 meters across and 1.2 meters high and I've used a star for the bush. Next one, tree, 5 meters across and 5 meters high. Five meters across and five meters high. And the symbol for a tree is a crescent. And last one, shrub, six meters across and 0 0.3 meters high. The symbol for a shrub is a square. Six meters across, 0 0.3 meters high. Notice how I use my ruler to neatly draw each part of this graph. Now the fourth and last thing I'm going to do is indicate the strata layers. In this case I'm estimating about three strata and I'm going to call them the lower strata, the middle strata and the higher strata. I'm going to use these big brackets to show the lower strata middle strata and the higher strata. If you don't show your strata, your strata layers, there will also be another resub. And this is the full profile diagram. On top of that, you'll also be collecting abiotic da data at Arataki. The units for light intensity is lux, the units for temperature is degrees Celsius and the units for relative humidity is a percentage and the units for wind speed is meters per second but we won't be measuring wind speed. So at Arataki we'll be measuring light intensity, temperature and relative humidity using a lux meter. They have a lux meter that, we, that can simultaneously um, measure these three factors. And just to note there on the bottom, you must reference the highlighted abiotic data in your assessment report. This is what your abiotic data should look like. Now, if we want to estimate the conditions in the emergent layer, we can't climb up a 30 meter high tree, or we can't go up a very tall building. But we can place our measuring device out in the open, on the ground that's not shaded by anything, to mimic emergent layer conditions. Because remember, there's nothing shading them. To estimate the conditions in the shrub layer, we could stand in the forest floor and hold our devi measuring devi device about two meters above the ground. And to estimate the conditions in the ground layer, we could just place our measuring device in the forest on the ground. So this column estimates the conditions in the emergent layer. This column estimates the conditions in the shrub layer. And these columns estimate the conditions in the ground layer. Cool, so let's check your understanding. Question one. What is wrong with this profile diagram? There are two correct answers. A. The axes are the wrong way around. B. Strata layers are not labelled. C. The key doesn't include the common name. D. The symbols don't match up. Question 2. You must draw a profile diagram using a ruler. A. True. B. False. Question 3. How should you estimate the abiotic conditions experienced by this kahikatea tree? A. Hold up the device to 2 meters in the forest, then record the measurement. B. Place the device on the forest floor, 
then record, record the measurement. C. Hold up the device to one meter in the forest and then record your measurement. D. Place the device on the forest floor out in the open and record the measurement. Question 4. You must include abiotic data in your written report. A. True. B. False. Question 5. What are the units for relative humidity? A. Lux. B. Degree Celsius. C. Percentage. D. Grams of water vapour per cubic metre of air. Kapa, you've reached the end of the lesson. So by now you should be able to collect transect data and record on a table, accurately draw a profile diagram, and describe how to collect abiotic data and interpret it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.